Steve Evans, I, I'm going to have to start with this. Unfortunately, uh, the FA charge against you came back. You have an extra match in the stands. Can I believe it was for a technicality? Uh, can you yeah, just... listen, it, the, as you know, these proceedings are private and confidential. Obviously, it's at the very low end of the scale, but I respect the Football Association's decision to do what they've done. But like it, respect it, we move on. Focus is a brilliant game tomorrow. Bolton Wanderers at home, full Lamex. What a game to look forward to. Yeah, well, let's get away and let's start talking yeah. about the football. Um, let's let's talk about last weekend first of all. How big will that goal be by TBC? And well, if it's the point that puts us in the playoffs, you know, on the 27th of April at 10 past five at night, because we don't know if we get three minutes or 10 minutes added these days, um, then, it's, then it's a massive goal. I think we knew when we went to Carlisle that we could win. We win. We win the game. Everyone ticks the box. Expected. We draw the game. Ooh, they've, got, they've left two behind. How did it feel to me? A really poor, disjointed first half performance. And the one thing you know in any league doesn't matter. People talk about differences in leagues. I've managed across all of the EFL Championship leagues one and two. If you don't turn up and and your own team's not at it, then you can expect it to be tough. So um, we'll take the point we come down the road with. It keeps us on the shut tails of Oxford with seven games to go and, and um, I think in the words of our opposition manager tomorrow you never he said that it was not for one second that everyone expects Stevens to be where we are now so but we've got seven games to go and we need a really decent points accumulation to be in the playoffs I'm just thinking that goal at Carlisle just how big it could be for the conference not that you need a conference boost but it doesn't harm for the running well it, it, it certainly changed the the mood on the way down the road is, as you know and others around us know, we, we made that journey up by train and come back by train, so we half the time. So when you're half the time and you're in close proximity in their own carriage, it's, you know, the, the boys were not buoyant, but they were in a, a real content mood that they'd got something from from what was always going to be a difficult trip. I said to you, I've never done easy journey up at Carlisle. So the confidence has been high this week. Um, the confidence is that we're really looking forward to a bank holiday double in it. I've said it last week, you know, Bolton Wanderers at home, ex Premier League. I started my own little football career there. Um and then you've got Charlton on Monday. So but we only have one focus, which is a I think I said months ago that I felt Bolton would get automatic promotion. And when I looked at the performance two weeks ago against Oxford and, and I covered that game live for the television is you cannot think anything else. So we know we've got to work it out tomorrow. I've had um, a note from my colleague up at Bolton in the Bolton News. Um, he spoke to Ian Everts, who apparently has said that you should be in the running for manager of the year this year. I've always said that was a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> he, know, he really knows what he's on about. Um, no, I think I, I remember Ian's a tough, big, strong centre-back at Chesterfield. I was a local rival at the Millers. I don't like him. I don't like him. But he's, he's, um, he's gone into management. He works incredibly hard. He works long hours like I do. He's disciplined. Um, I've seen the progress he had in getting them promoted. I've seen the progress that he's that he's made with the quality of the signings he's made. And I've got other people, other managers sit in my office after games and say, yeah, but Bolton's one of those clubs that, that you know, the budget's this and the budget's that. I don't care what your budget is. You still have to deliver against it. You still have measurements. And uh, I think he's a real good manager. I think he's capable of taking Bolton into the Championship at higher. It's a Premier League club for me. And um, and he'll get good support. But yeah, Ian's a real bright guy. He'll he'll make sure his troops are at it tomorrow for sure. We mentioned this phrase a few times last season, free hit. Is Bolton, even though it's at home, is it a free hit tomorrow? Well, it's unusual for me to get messages from clubs around the top six, higher than us, not naming names, who are saying, good luck, good luck Friday. Because we're because we're playing one of the favourites for promotion, not the favourites, but we're playing one of the favourites. Um, is that a free hit? Not for us. It's not. We have to be competitive. We went up early to uh, to Bolton and lost a five goal thriller. Which was one of the games of the season. We lost. I hate games of the season when you lose. It's always games of the season when you win. But we should have got something from the game. I think there were circumstances that night that I won't go into that really annoyed us. Um, but. The one thing that we faced when we went there was was a team packed of talent, full of quality. The bench option is incredible. One of the best midfield players that's played for me in recent years, Kyle Dempsey, you know, has, has been on the bench recently and I know how good Kyle is. So if that's the standard to get in, Ian, Ian's recruitment has been um, absolutely wonderful. I think you, 
as, as well, you've got um, Charlton come up as well. That's, that makes it a tough weekend. Oh, it's a tough weekend. I think in isolation, we always knew that Easter was was eventually going to come. And for us, Easter don't mean Easter eggs. Oh, I like the Easter eggs, as people know. But it, it's um, Bolton Wanderers in Charlton in the space of four point four days. It's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful for our, for, for our supporters. You know, 24 months ago, two years ago this month, people were expecting to be going to National League ground. And, and here we are entertaining Bolton at home. They'll be on the roofs at the Lamex. And we'll go to Charlton. The, the, the resurgence at Charlton since Nathan Jones went in has, has been incredible. I know some of the players, just the confidence of the players. I know the chairman there. They've just got that vibrance about themselves now that it makes it much more difficult to go now than, than it did a couple of months ago. You've, I can't help but think back to two years ago in the game, I think it was the 2nd of April when you played uh, Oldham at the Lamex and got beaten, everyone, and I, I hold my hands up and even I thought that could be it for Stevenage. You won three games and drew, drew one of the next four and it, that was enough to stay up. Yeah, yeah, I think in isolation we we were never getting rid of. No, we were never, I think I said that to the to the chairman. The chairman never for one second thought when they appointed me we were going to be in trouble from down, and I knew it. But I went home after Oldham thinking, listen, the, the words of John Sheridan, the manager that day for Oldham, if it's a boxing match, it stopped. If it's twelve rounds, it stopped in every round in your favour because, and it was it was uh, Stevenage Football Club lost the game to Carl Piagiani. It was absolutely magnificent. Hitting balls out, hitting balls off the line, kicking them off the line. But uh, no, you, you have to retain a, a belief if it doesn't go right for us tomorrow. Other teams around the country, we can't affect them, but they need to look after themselves. And then we go forward to Monday. And, and I've always said that on the horizon, when I've looked at certain benchmarks, I look at when we come back up from Exeter. Again, I think we're going by choo-choo. And uh, so I think when we come, look up, we come back from Exeter, I look at Barnsley's coming into town. How exciting is this? Who makes two home games now? A Bolton Wanderers and Barnsley Football Club, another club that's based in Premier League. So we're, we're looking forward to this. And we deserve to be here with these teams. This ain't, this ain't a made up project. This is a chairman who's recently put over a million pounds in to make our balance sheet and everything around the football club really strong. We, we don't operate losses. I'm seeing around this league three, four, five, ten million pound losses. We don't operate like that. We operate in a real good model. So we're in a great shape. And and you know what? I've said it weeks ago. I said it months ago. If we fall short, if we fall short this season, we'll come back stronger and better next season. That's that's the plan. But we're we're focused on what we can achieve this season. You know, when I was thinking about the game during the week, and I thought, well, you're out of the playoffs now. But then I sort of cottoned on. Yeah, but it's still in your hands. You've, if you win every single game, you make the playoffs. Now, that's difficult. Very difficult. But it's not impossible. <laughs> yeah, I think in football you always want it in your own hands, don't you? You always want it in your own hands. That's that's why this weekend is is really vital. But what I noticed this weekend, we are the team in that top seven or eight with the real two big big games, big tough games. That everyone knows they're going to really have to be at the best to get points returned in those two games. But what follows that is other teams have really big tough games coming in this, the following Saturday and the following Tuesday. So I think this will take two or three weeks before it looks like who's going to grab that last place. Because I think we can all accept the teams the teams above Oxford have gone. They've sailed into the sunset either and fighting for a different prize from us. You know, Peter and I got hoping last week when Derby got beat at Northampton. So um, all, all of a sudden it's, you know, that second place. I think Portsmouth, have, to use an expression, the, the Navy sailed out of Portsmouth. They've gone there in the championship. And, and it's wonderful for what a great club, but... I think that fight for second place is, is really on. Our own fight can turn the last playoff place. Because I still maintain, we get in it, we'll win it. And you have to be in it to win it. You'll need the backing of the fans. I mean, you've had the backing of the fans all season, but you'll definitely need it tomorrow against a raucous port and wondrous section. Yeah, it's been incredible. I, I was in, in Stevens rather early this morning, just after 6.30, filling up with some fuel and... I've got supporters coming over to me. No, not everything. <laughs> and Bolton tomorrow, and it's wonderful. They're passionate about the club. Um, I think the one thing we've we've done with our supporters is we connect with our supporters. There is no there is no difference how the majority of our supporters get brought up to how I got brought up to how Rena got brought up. Ravel, you know, we we get brought up in their their own working class environment, if I can use that expression. 
And I'm proud of it. And I'm proud of what our supporters bring. And I'm proud that tomorrow they get the opportunity to out sing and out noise about one of the supporters who I think is incredible. You know, they're getting, I think on Monday, they're expecting another 25,000 at the home game. So it, it shows you what the mate that we're up against. You know what, though? But we love that, don't we? We love it. We love a challenge. We love a fight. Our supporters are the same. And all we can all ask him is, my job is to make sure that whatever team we pick tomorrow, we give 100%. We can't give 110, but we give everything we've got. And every player goes home, win, lose, or draw, extremely thinking of giving everything for the cause today. And all I ask our supporters is to, yeah. is to back a squad who are really, really care. And, and I know that because I see these guys every day. And just finally, uh, this time last week, I asked you what would happen if Jamie Reid scored against Scotland. Well, he didn't score, but uh, Northern Ireland did win. He's not expecting to start tomorrow, apparently. <laughs> well, I don't think he's going to start either. He's, he's <laughs> coming in my door this morning and he's humming and singing and he's bopping away. And I, oh, oh Reid, he scored, did he? <laughs> and uh, now, well, listen, in all seriousness, we, we, he got clapped in by our players, applauded in. He got applauded into the office and staff as then the meeting really we hear really in the building because we hear the players. We bring him in and um, I think to a man and, and a woman we all sat here and said we're we're so proud of him. But you know, if Reedy's on the pitch at any stage tomorrow, he'll still be getting screamed at to to move. He'll still be getting screamed at to win a header, to take a chance. And that's that's the wonderful aspects of football. But I don't think it's the last time that we're going to see Jimmy Reed play for his country. I think he's Certainly done enough in Romania and done enough at Hamden Park. Spoke to some of the staff behind Stevie Clark at, at Scotland and they said, Scotland got the ball, we all watched it, Scotland got the ball and that type of stuff. But they had their obvious worries when, when the ball went into Reed in their half of the pitch. That tells you how far Jimmy Reed has progressed. He's, he's incredible. His family must be busting with pride. Well, I've just said to the boys after we interviewed him, he strode into the room and he looks bigger he just it looks like it's absolutely filled him with so much belief and confidence and happiness. And yeah, we, you know, the thing we, we've been fortunate, in, I've been fortunate in my manager career and what with Paul, we've we've worked with some of the best that have to have that arrogance, confidence. It's a very fine line. You don't want arrogance, but they have to have a touch of that to be get the complete the complete box. And um, so from that point, I look at Ivan Tony. I watch Ivan take the England penalty that night. It's not for one second as he's not thinking he's putting the ball in the net. Chris Wood, whose who score goes continually with the clubs he's played at in the Premier League. You know, so so from that point of view, Reedy really has that arrogance, ignorance, ability, belief. Um, most importantly, he's got an ability to put the ball in the net. And if, if he misses chances tomorrow, gives us no concern, he'll be back for the next one. He misses one, he comes back for the next one. And that's a wonderful thing you get with the best strikers at any level. They miss chances. Every striker misses chances. But they come back. The best I've ever seen for me and Alan Shearer. He would go and miss a chance. He's back five minutes later, misses. And you've seen, he's back again. They don't stop getting in there. They want to score a goal. Because everyone in the old days, everyone would home and say, What's happening in the newspaper? Read the papers tomorrow. Who scored the goal? We want to see Reed on the score sheet tomorrow. And I'm sure Michael Emily does for Northern Ireland.